we have arrived in Ketchikan and looks like folks are being released upon the world. So we're down here at this far dock, which is actually the closest one to like the lumberjack show and whatnot. Good morning, Good morning. from Ketchikan. It's actually pretty clear out there. Oh, it's nice outside. It's a nice temperature too. Yeah, for the city, <laughs> I guess they say that receives the most rainfall in Southeast Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh, it's looking nice. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna grab a quick breakfast, hop off the ship. We're going on another adventure today. We figured, you know, we it, it's nice when you go out in the woods and you do have smart people who oh, yeah. <laughs> tell you what the plants are and the things. We've done some of that recently and it was very pleasant. Yes. So we're gonna go on a little hike through the rainforest. Um, and we're going through Wild Wolf Tours, which mm -hmm. is independent. It's a three hour, they have a two hour and a three yeah. hour. We're gonna do the three hour version, rainforest hiking, totem park, mm -hmm. who knows what else, some history, Maybe some Niger. Like some salmon dip involved. Oh yeah, there's snacks. You know they get me in with them snacks. <sighs> Sounds really cool and something we haven't done in Ketchikan yet, so we're excited to experience it. Yeah, so we'll get a little bit out of the town mm -hmm. of Ketchikan and see some stuff. Yeah. Anyway, breakfast. Quickly. <laughs> Ah, no steakhouse for breakfast. Oh, all right. Town animals are out here at the pool. Burritos are out here at the pool. Slow opening doors. Holy cuteness. Look at all of this town animal excitement. They got a giant octopus going. All these colorful dudes. Every chair is taken. People are going to be mad today. They can't even get a deck chair. But for now, it's burrito time. That just opened. Everything is freshy fresh. We got a wheat model, a jalapeno model, some coffee, and some yeah. juice. We'll just chill here and overlook Ketchikan. And welcome officially to Ketchikan. We are on the ground and we are going to come down here to the meeting spot for Wild Wolf. Should be just boop, right there. All right, we found Tracy. We're going to wander over here, get the adventure started. Nice, there's our ride. We're gonna head out for our rainforest walk today. Um, the trail we're gonna go on does have some stairs, some uphill downhill portions. We'll also go visit the uh, totem park and we'll share stories behind the totem poles and the native culture with you. So this tunnel here is built in 1954. It's said to be one of the only tunnels you can go through, around, and over. We have three different types of natives here in our area, the Clinket, the Haida, and the Simshian. Being on the island, there are no roads or bridges off of our island, so we do have to either take a ferry or fly. It's part of the Tongass National Forest. It's our nation's largest national forest at 16.8 million acres. And we will be in bear country out here. We only have black bears on our island, no brown bears or grizzly bears. But besides our bears, we do have a lot of Sitka black-tailed deer here on the island. There are wolves. They don't normally come into the populated areas. Now you can see the cruise ship docked over there. Norwegian Cruise Lines has um, partnered with the um, property owners over here to build this new cruise ship dock. So the Norwegian cruise ships now dock out here at Ward Cove. Oh my gosh, we've stopped and we see a, I guess that's a black tailed deer right on the side of the road. Yeah. We've spotted our first nitro officially. Bye, friend. <laughs> And I will uh, lock up the van while we're here, so if there's anything you want to leave in the van, that will be fine. All right, we have literally come to the end of the road. I feel like boys to men out here. But this is the trail, what should you say, Lunge Creek? Lunch, Lunch Creek. Creek. It is. I think that's actually right. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> Let the adventure begin. Oh, okay. I see the sign. Lunch Creek Trail. This is called skunk cabbage because it has a strong smell like a skunk. And the bears will dig up the root systems of that plant in the springtime. Yeah, look at all this green. So this trail is pretty nice and gravelly. The three hour version has some steps and some uphill downhill. Their two hour version is a lot easier apparently. Oh, cool. Very pretty. So this tree here, this is the cedar tree. This is a really important resource for the natives. This is the wood they use for their totem poles, their houses, and their canoes because that cedar wood's really rot resistant and insect resistant. It does last a long time. All right, first stop, we're going to head down to a waterfall viewing area. Here comes our first instance of steps. Oh, yeah, avoid the logs, they are slippery. The thickest spruce tree. 
It's our state tree. It'll go up to about 220 feet tall. If you've ever heard of the Spruce Goose airplane that Howard Hughes built, mm. that's where it gets its name from because some of the wood was used in that airplane. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that the moss. natives would use the moss for their bandages because it's very absorbent. Mm. Yeah, I hear the water getting louder. Oh, there's a little peak. Oh, cool, a little boardwalk system. Let the water speak for itself. <laughs> I guess sometimes you can see salmon here. She said we are a little bit too early for the salmon. I think we're looking probably mid-August and later into September for that excitement. Still gorgeous. Oh, the salmon going. forest, yeah. <laughs> We've got a few more stairs to get us down to the next part of the boardwalk system. I guess that's more skunk cabbage. I don't see too much in the way of Devil's Club or anything out here, so that's good. Don't need to run into any of that. These are some great stairs, let me tell you. Because <laughs> they're great. Okay. I think we're going to get a little lower down to a viewpoint. But that's awesome from up here. Oh, we found some Devil's Club. Right. No, the sex club. Lunch Creek Bridge. Oh, there's Lunch Creek Bench. There's some powerful water. Oh gosh. You can imagine just filled with salmon running up here. That'd be cool. Then on the other side, it flows right down here to that body of water. All right, it's basking time. Basking time is the time where we bask. Kind of figured out was self-explanatory. Hey, what? It's really loud. <laughs> All right, rather than continuing in that direction, we are going to say goodbye to our cascading waters. Head back up this away. Yeah, <laughs> there she is. Say bye. Bye to your nature. I'm, I mean, we're not leaving nature. There's plenty more nature to come. Ooh, oh, okay. We're going to run down a little closer to the water. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. You know, sometimes it's worth being tricked into exercise when the views are like this. I got to say. And the temperature is. Yeah, I don't even need sleeves. No, I think we're in the. Yeah. We're mid to upper 50s today, I would say, so not bad. Look at this beautiful red and green getting ready to pass me. Oh, that was a beautiful tree trunk. There's another little platform for us to soak in some views. So this is Pacific Ocean. Oh, wow. You Oh, we love the hanging moss. <laughs> we like in the moss. I've got some berry bushes. Yeah, I guess they're all, well, you don't eat the elderberries unless you, you can boil, boil them. You can them or make wine out of them, but you don't eat them all. They're poisonous, apparently. <laughs> so don't just come in here and start eating That's them. That's true. Do your research before you start turning this into a buffet. <laughs> yeah. Good point. All right, back up we go. Oh, there's little cubby holes. Anybody home? Hmm. Yeah, we got a peek at the whole waterfall from down here. All right, now we've come back to Lunch Creek Trail. So later in the summer, there'll be little red berries that come out on there called bunchberry. That berry we don't eat because it can upset your stomach. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. Add yeah. that one to the list of no-nos. Cool. Okay, so we've got another little downhill section here. So fiddlehead ferns, check. Those are on the approved munching list. When they're cooked. When they're cooked, probably, yeah. Oh, cool branch. Cool water. Cool stairs. Oh, look at the bark pattern on that one. Oh, there's too much cool stuff up here. We'll get very high winds, up to 100 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And those high winds will blow our trees down. And this is the result of that. This is a root system oh, of the a shallow tree roots. that's blown over. Up to 100 Oh, wow. A cedar tree that died. Yeah. Some of them do get 
blown over with the wind yet, but sometimes they can remain standing for, yeah, long periods of time like that. Oh, yeah, I feel like a rugged adventurer out on the trial. <laughs> Looking for nature. Ooh, a little, little, down, little den down there, so the bears the will hibernate under than. there. Yeah, Ooh. the black bears are Let's smaller. See. They'll get up to about 400 pounds. So I, don't, okay. I don't see any in there. Oh, so huckleberries. So like to go out and pick blueberries, huckleberries, salmon berries. There's blueberry bushes over here. Mm. Buffet's open. <laughs> those are good to eat. Oh, we got another um, one. So laughing berry. Laughing oh, berry? Like laughing berry. <laughs> ha ha. They call them a starberry when they were kids because the end of them looks like a star. Well, we are not going to starve out here. There's a lot of food I can have. Maybe a nice fiddlehead salad with a side of berries. There's all kinds of nutrients. It's helping to feed the nutrients growing right on top of it. So this is what we call a nursery log here. Hmm. Yep, it's just helping to feed grows the right back up out. Life finds a way. Okay, I say that every time. Oh, that does look like a good den. Oh gosh, a big boy could fit in there. Shoot, I could fit in there. Sleep for the winter. However, bags of rock dropped by helicopters. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, let's <laughs> rock so that they can maintain the trail. Yeah, hopefully they're not dropping any today. Just tiny little trickle falls. Oh gosh, everybody else is way up here. Guys, we gotta catch up, we're slow. I mean, I'm not slow, I'm taking time to appreciate the nature. That's what's happening right now. That's exactly what's happening. Right now, I'm gonna appreciate. I took a picture of that. You did? Mm -hmm. You you pre-appreciated it for me. Oh, this is gonna be our tour around point here. We'll just come back the same way we came. Okay. All right, now we just need a giant bear to come up and say hello. Good job. You know, from a distance, not not like super close. Way. Yeah, across the water. Hello. <laughs> did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Oh. Back up we go. Oh, you found a cool... It's like a camel. Oh, camel looks like a, a ship with a mast. Sorry, I think oh, it does look like a camel. Looks, looks like, like a camel. camel with a mast. Ooh, that's cool over there too. Yeah, I am just, I'm like D. I stop every few seconds to be like, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Nobody home this time? All right, then. <laughs> that was a joke, okay. Nobody even appreciates my bear related jokes. It's fine. It's fine, then. Oh, spot a couple of banana slugs in the wild. Yep, so we got a little dark slug, a little light slug. These guys are like five, six inches long. Well, they are moving slowly. Yeah. Now we've joined back up with that first trail that we started, and now we're headed up and out. Now we get some water. We'll hop back over here, and I think we're headed to a totem area next. Oh, we got crackers and salmon dip as part of the package. See, I'm lured in by snacks every time. So here I have a cedar bark basket. Oh. I took a class to weave this. Took me oh. about 36 hours. Oh, wow. I had a lot of help from the local weaver, Holly Churchill. She's a famous weaver here in the area. If you were to buy a basket this size from her, it would cost about $600 because yeah, wow. she's a famous weaver here. And then she also taught me to weave the uh, cedar bark hat. So this is all done from the bark of the cedar tree. Okay. And then I have the native drum. It's got the wolf on it from my clan and it's made out of a deer hide. Mm -hmm. So just a couple examples of local native art. Secretary of State Sewer purchased Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million. And that comes out to only about two cents per acre. They didn't have a written language. So they would carve the totem poles to tell their stories. And it also shows their family clan and heritage. All right, we have made our next stop, which this is Potlatch. I guess a totem park, privately owned. Yeah. But they let people come in and do tours. I saw a bunch of big buses out front and stuff like that. Oh, so that's the carving center. All right, well, we're going to go on another adventure. Oh, cool. You can smell the wood. What did you say? Cedar wood. Clam 
Clan shops. So that was a clan house. Let's wander out here and see what's happening. Yeah, we got a couple of other houses on this side. Back in the day, the whales were being hunted almost to extinction down south. But the eagle flew to the whales when he told them to come north to Alaska, where the people only hunt for what they need. <laughs> yeah, I think these are a little more modern. There's a bear in the garage. I've got a nature sighting. Guys, look, there's a bear. Let's lighten it up so we can see him better. Mm, there we go. So the the scales were painted by kids from the cruise ships? Oh, wow. Good boy, scales. Oh, gosh. All right, let me go look at this door that I would never fit in. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, this little uh, little round door. That 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 would not suit. <laughs> oh, now we're gonna have a peek. Oh, there were two bears back there. I didn't even see that. Gosh, all these cars. I heard you can see lots of fjords in Alaska. Fjords, Chryslers. <laughs> True. Okay. <laughs> the natives would hollow out a log, put water in it, and hot rocks in the fire to steam the wood to make it more pliable um, for their canoes. Their canoes would be up to 60 feet long. Gosh, yeah. so this this is the size of a door that you had to go in. <laughs> stand next I'm to from, it. You know, I'm in this door. We would not get along very well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Purple flowers there are a fox club. They make the heart medication digitalis out of those. In the display case here, we have a skull and some rib bones of a whale. Oh, yeah. I've got skull and bones and other stuff of a whale in here. A little smokehouse. It is dark in here. Yeah, it smells nice. Camera's doing a nice job of lightening it up, actually. Thanks, camera. Yeah, so that was this whole bottom section. Wow. That's a lot of history. Yeah, no, <laughs> so now the carving center. Oh, there we go. It's like some freshy fresh totem. And a bear over there too. This is the carving center here. A tiny pole would be carved out of one tree or log. They might use another piece of wood to attach the glue to the fins and those would be attached with the notching system. It would take six months up to several years to carve a totem pole. Then they'd have a totem pole raising. They'd dig a huge hole in the ground, and it was just ropes, manpower, and leverage used to get that totem pole raised. The other villages are supposed to reciprocate, hold their own potlatch, and give even nicer gifts back. This is a really important part of the native culture. They would have totem pole raisings, marriage ceremonies, but sadly, when the missionaries were coming up, they were teaching the natives not to carve their totem poles, not to hold their potlatches. <laughs> All right, now we're headed up to the gift shop area. She says there's only like two and a half percent of sales tax here versus in town. So <gasps> gift shopping and there's a restroom, stuff like that. This is where they keep their D's. All right, so from the carving area. Oh yeah, straight across out here. Yeah. Welcome. Oh gosh, there's cars in here. I guess there's like an antique firearms museum outside. Look at all this, a t-shirt, 1695, two for 30. I wonder how much the cars are. I'm thinking not for sale. Oh, this is a handy identification guide. Okay. My favorite Alaska animal <laughs> is all of them. I need this in a grown up size. That is perfect. Adult size. <laughs> we got some rain jackets and lightweight jackets. Yeah, you get all your Alaska gear. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little representation of like the symbol on their state flag. Look at these. <laughs> hey, I need oh, the that's walrus. Oh. Well, I don't have those. A puffin. Cookies. Oh gosh, cookies. I'll do that one. Thank you. Oh, I do like those too. <laughs> my weakness. Getting them off yeah. the tray apparently is also my weakness. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I had a Biscoff cookie. Just like. Am I on an airplane? No, I know. That's <laughs> the only place I really ever see those is planes. I don't know. Is there, there's a Dr. Seuss book about a moose. I don't think I've ever read this one. A big hearted moose? I guess. I need to catch up on my Dr. Seuss. Just a man and his dog out for a ride. Ah, that must be the vintage firearm collection. Oh, cool. 
Cute. Yeah, they got cute charms. Mm -hmm. I like that. Da -da -da -da. No. Wow, Get more wildlife. Oh, here's the museum. Okay. There we've got like taxidermy stuff. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff up there. There's machinery and bottles. Oh, like a carousel horse. Well, maybe not a carousel horse, but a horse. That's what a wolverine looks like. Oh, a wolverine. We needed that last week. Looks nothing like Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's cool. It's a little room full of um vintage stuff. That too. Mm -hmm. This is like a Tommy gun. Gatling gun. There you go. This is a huge um shop and museum. Let us get loaded up again. So in our downtown area, we have our historic red light district, Creek Street. That's um, where they had the bordellos back in the day. This is another Salmon Spawn Creek here, Ward Creek. So we have our two hour tour it goes on a trail um, near Ward Creek there. And that's an easier trail that doesn't have any uh, stairs on it. That is our shipyard. They did actually build two of our state ferries there. And that stairway has got a street sign on it. They actually give our stairway street names here. That is how some people access their homes. Your ship is up ahead to the right. You guys are docked at berth one. And I'll just take you on over to Creek Street area. So we just got dropped off here at Creek Street. She said obviously she could take you back to the ship. She could drop you at Creek Street. She would really take you anywhere in town that you wanted to be dropped off. But we all said, hey, Creek Street is delightful. And now we're gonna see if there's any salmon here in the creek. She said, probably not. Maybe we'll see a stray salmon or two because the pink are not running yet. Yeah. So I guess second half of August, this place would be jumping. Yeah. Li literally. That's when we're gonna come back, I think. Sure. Yeah, we definitely have to plan a trip. Maybe next year we'll shoot for August because I'm curious to see. We want to be here for prime salmon season. Yeah, I think there's a total of five ships in port today, so a little busy in town. Yeah, it's I saw, I know, New Amsterdam, Norwegian Sun is over there in Wards Cove, Discovery Princess, Silver Muse, and us, of course. Everybody's parked neatly down here downtown except Norwegian. <laughs> we did pass where they were. We did, we did. Away. Yeah. Well, we've had an eagle spotting in a tree right here at Creek Street. Let's see if we can uh, get a hopefully not backlit peek at him. Oh, he's so backlit. Let's lighten you up, sir. That's a little better. Oh, he's getting all the good angles now. Is he modeling for you? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and have a wander through downtown back toward the ship zone again. There's Whale Park. Oh, the fish and chips at Lily's Bubble Tea. Man, we haven't been to Lily's Bubble Tea in three years. I think Silver Muse is stalking us, I'm not sure. Hey, Carnival Spirit. <laughs> a little last minute catch a can basking as we climb back to our home. Last Alaskan port, we're in Canada tomorrow. Wow. I mean, I'm happy about that, but I'm not, but it's Alaska. Yeah. to the cabin and found a little froggy friend. Robert. <laughs> well, we're in the cabin. We just heard the horn sound. We have separated ourselves from the pier here at Ketchikan. 
Get a little peek down to the Silver Muse. Oh, and the New Amsterdam, actually, too. We can see her. So, sailing away. Back on board time was 12.30, so technically we had a 7 a.m. to 1 p.m., they call it. But it's 1 o'clock now. Away we go. So we are leaving Ketchikan, sailing away as we speak. Yeah. Getting a little hungry. Gonna go grab some lunch, actually. But first, we gotta talk about our day with Wild Wolf Tours. It was awesome. I know. So we got to get out of Maine, Ketchikan yep. area, which we've never done before, and go experience the Tongass National Forest. Get a stroll. It's beautiful. We literally drove to the end of Ketchikan. Yeah. It was like, the road only goes a certain number of miles each way. We rode something. to the end of the road. Yeah, and then you get up and there's beautiful scenery and the boardwalk, like, everything was really nice and manicured. Yeah. There were definitely easy. some stairs involved, but, you know, we knew that in advance. Right, and, and if you can't fine. do the stairs, they have a two-hour right. tour with no stairs. You do a different trail, but... We saw a black-tailed Sitka deer. Yes. We saw banana slugs. Eagles. Eagles, like lots of cool stuff. And mostly just, it was just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I'm scenery. sure if you come in August, you probably get a little mm -hmm. different dose of wildlife. Yeah, yeah. But, because, you know, no bears. And she said there's not a moose on the island. <laughs> Apparently there are no moose. Darn, no. Um, and the waterfall was really pretty. Yeah. So yeah, definitely recommend that. And then we got to go to the Totem Park, yeah. which is locally owned. And we'd never been there before and it had so much. And we got to hear all the stories that she told about the different clans and... and um, yeah, just preserving like, that history. Yeah, oh, it was amazing. Really good salmon dip, I too. I know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Snacks. Snacks always help. So. Yeah. Anyway, awesome day. Thanks to Tracy. Tracy good was gosh, awesome. That was yeah. a great day. Uh, now, I guess, speaking of snacks... I want some food. Lunch time. So, <laughs> come on, let's eat. Yes. <laughs> we do have the chopsticks noodly type buffet, as well as the Good Eats. Now well, there's our Good Eats menu. So there's lasagna, pasta, jerk chicken, pot roast, vegetable biryani. Yeah. What? We've always got pizza as an option, of course. Oh, there's a little menu mate dietary uh, question stand. This is a coffee shop on some of the ships, but I don't see this being open for anything. And we've got prepared salads and the salad bar. Oh, this is where they keep their D's at the salad bar? No one's here. <laughs> <laughs> How could I have guessed? What was over here? Quinoa and feta, bean, corn, and tortilla, pepperoni and pasta, mixed tender leaf and walnuts, coleslaw and potato salad. It is salad time. Time. So D has gotten some salad. I also got salad. What the heck? All right, mine is a little less green than hers, but there are some vegetables down there. And I got some pasta salad and some quinoa. Man, Chris is telling us about totem poles now. That's funny. <laughs> anyway, we're headed out to the Lido. The next thing on the agenda is something called Frontier Fest, which is sort of like, you know, games and stuff. Just let you guys know what's going on here for the Frontier Festival. We have a chance to get them to participate in the Frontier Festival. Alright, so it looks like we got two games for the Frontier Festival. There's the axe throwing, which we already saw the other day. And then there's another one that involves throwing like balls on a string and trying to get it to stick on a ladder. You get one ticket for participating and then bonus tickets depending on how well you do in the game. So, D has volunteered to run up and get footage of the Frontier Games. So, y'all, D gonna be vlogging. She, she gonna do good, she gonna do good. Okay, we're gonna check out the first game. Oh, they did a really good job. So basically you throw this ball that has two ends to it and try and make it hook onto one of the rungs and the different colors are different points that you collect. And I guess you get that many tickets for that. Pretty cool. It's a tad bit dangerous if you're walking by. <laughs> so the other thing is axe throwing like they did the other day for the lumberjack challenge. And you have to make it stick on there. It's a foam axes and Velcro basically is how it works. It's pretty cool. Ah, uh, we're back over here at our observation table now. Y'all, did she do good? Did we get lots of good stuff? Oh yeah. These lines are long. A lot of people are participating in this bad boy. How'd you it's do? It's dangerous for that it, other one. I yeah, the, almost got like hit yeah. with it. I was hit, like, oh. Hit in the head or somewhere in the yeah, leg with those leg, balls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, a little bit more ladder footage. Oh wow. Oh, does that count? That should count. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. I guess the lower you get it, the more points you get. All right, we're leaving all these balls. I forgot they only got two throws. I was waiting for a third throw. 
Yep, two throws. Hey, there's ice cream over here. Yeah, it's Frontier ice cream. Actually, Froyo, that's right. I do like to have the vanilla out again. I like that better than the strawberry. We are gonna head down to deck two. Maybe check out some trivia. Oh, look at me. We haven't done any trivia yet. We have not really. Come down to the Fountain oh, Cafe yeah, area yeah. now. They are doing charades and they're gonna have a couple of trivias after this. That's fun. It was kind of like telephone version of charades where they start on one end and people are, I guess, you're all face back to back, or however it is. And the first person would act it out to the second person. They would turn around and act it out to the third person, so on and so forth. And then the person at the end of the line had to guess what the charade was after it had passed through several people. And everybody gets medals, so. <laughs> so up first is Game of Thrones oh, trivia. Oh, mercy. We're not going to be good at this. All right, up next we've got rock music trivia. Thing number one, name of the song. And thing number two, the artist. Trophy has been acquired. Perfect score on the rock trivia. It made up for the Game of Thrones trivia. We got like 9 out of 20 on Game of Thrones, so. Y'all, it is dinner time. Like right now. Dinner <laughs> opened like two minutes ago. We gotta go. Yes. So we're ready for it. Formal night number two. Mm -hmm. We fancy. Mm -hmm. Throw that sock in there. Boom. Food. Got friends right here by the elevator lobby. Cool. Welcome back. The bread of the evening was cranberry and something else, but you know what? Two cranberries. I'm all about it. Ciabatta. It doesn't matter. Nobody needs that ciabatta. Double cranberries where it's at. Good. And some butter. Welcome back to Pharaoh's Palace. It is showtime. Showtime tonight is Epic Rock, which of course is one of our favorite shows. They'll have the pre-show here in a minute probably where the guitarist from the band will come out and play and then we'll just bust into the show. because it's dark and we lose an hour of sleep tonight. Facts. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're going back to Canada time this evening, so yeah. clock's ahead an hour. Well, we don't have a court until sleep. like 8 p.m., so That's true. we could sleep in regardless. We could sleep nice. until 7.59. We could. We're not gonna. So back in the cabin, how has your day been? It was really since we good. Last said words. Yeah, so the tour today was amazing. Oh yeah. And that seemed like it was so long ago. It does. Uh, it was like two days ago. Yeah, dinner is really good because I don't know what else we've done since then. And yeah. then the show, Epic Rock, is one of my favorites, of honestly. Like if you like rock music, like really good, the all the sing along songs that everybody yes. knows. It's great, and the cast on here is especially good. So yeah. Yeah. Epic Rock is one of my favorites. It's epic. <laughs> But we're back in the cabin and we're mm -hmm. going to sleep. Yeah. So tomorrow, mostly a sea day. Yeah. Victoria at night. Yep. 
hopefully. I mean, weather's good, yeah, so we should have better luck this week than we did last week. Uh, but that's it. So we'll see y'all tomorrow victoriously. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night.